What's up guys? This is the Braveman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Total War Let's Play as Louisiana. So to begin with, so to continue where we left off, we are attacking this Ottoman force that's currently sat behind our lines in the Don. As you can see, our front line is moving up very handsomely deep into formerly Russian territory. We have one army here behind the lines to clear up. A significant cavalry fractions so will have to be a bit careful, but nevertheless we shall destroy them. So let's take them on. So we are getting fairly close towards the, the end game with this Louisiana, and Louisiana campaign, but obviously because we are now fighting some bigger factions, um, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be over in um, a handful of episodes because we do have a... we are facing a number of, um, a number of nations with fully defined military forces. So, get our guns up. Let's form our defensive line. Because oh, this unit's got a bugged unit count. We've now got more guns than we should have. Let's make sure my... I suppose... Yeah, they can form square. I'm not sure what it was they could do. And let's take... Bring out my other infantry to form the other line. And there we go. Cavalry hold back in reserve. I've got a spare unit of expat infantry that's going to go on the left flank because there's there's room and it's right there. And then let's deploy our howitzers because they're going to really blunt the initial cavalry attack. Again, that's another bugged artillery unit. Pretty much just fire whatever they can get. I like this clump back up here because there's, a, there's a naturally a large concentration of enemy cavalry that can get some good secondary hits, although we do want the 12 pounder to hit the Sipahi. That might cause them to advance, but the, if they advance that's even better. To be honest, we can just shrapnel them with our field artillery. We probably want to start doing that because the strength of the enemy is in their cavalry. So let's make sure we are maximizing our efforts. Well, except for you. You hit the Janissaries there. Shrapnel shot away. They can't sit, they can't withstand that level of attack for very long. I mean, we are attacking them, but Naturally, we have such a significant advantage here in our artillery that why am I not going to use it? Especially when it's our field artillery that's doing such good work. Mamelukes are on the charge. They are quick climbing us back. But I think we can, if, if they want to sit around and play the artillery fight, then we're going to be in a very good position. There's ammo pushing up. So the left flank, I've, I'm currently o not overextended, but I'm massively in favour of. I'm going to advance. The Mamluks haven't pushed. But I may preemptively deploy these sepoys into square. Actually, the Mountain Nizam did not take that very well. You men hit the archers, you men hit Sipahi. It looks like they're deciding what to do. So my sepoys are my weaker troops, so it does make sense. Whoa, okay. Canister shot at quick at point blank range. So count charge their heavies with my General's bodyguard. Ooh, they're getting quick lined as well. So start to quick line the enemy troops in the field and maybe their own howitzers to the rear. Oh, form square, you damn fool. A lot of cavalry coming in there. go so now we have total dominance of the left flank I 
you guys switch to round shot and begin engaging the mounted Nizam all the way to the rear. So I might pull my light cavalry out of that engagement. You guys switch to well, continue to canister the Tata. The archers should not stick around for very long because they're going to get hammered by fire in the flank. See, this is where having pikes are handy. I know people like to meme about oh, pikes, pikes in this era. What a silly idea. But actually, it's like, no, 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 no. They're in crazy useful. See, boys are broken. Push up, retarget all my howitzers because I can never be sure. You guys engage the Nizams. Let's get all my field artillery to focus on the howitzer. Okay, let's try to charge them in. Charge my light cavalry in one last desperate defence. My sipoys can reform the square. I mean, ultimately, I don't think they're going to win because it's quite a lot of quite a lot of light cavalry there. I could potentially charge in troops to support, but don't really want to. You guys chamfer off that corner. You men drop into square. Light cavalry fall back. Like, yeah, I'm now starting to get issues with them skirmishing away from me because of the spikes. So if these Regiment de Trogé can defeat the Sipahi coming in... Yeah, there we go. So they've got another... They've, they've broken one square. They're attempting to charge another. 57th the Wavering. You guys are... Like, I don't quite know why those guys have all broken so quickly. Let's get the men over there. It's an odd one. They might come back. The cavalry did. I don't know. Is Mounted Nizam fire that devastating? You guys form square again. Charge in, bring the war to the enemy. Maybe they got hit by musket fire. Or maybe they got hit by artillery fire. Well, six of one, half dozen of the other, really. My field artillery is earning us no friends there, so let's just cease fire. Charge to Pahi. You guys charge the general's bodyguard, try and kill him. You guys get over to the guns, secure them. Let's get our howitzers to fire round shot at that Nizam infantry there. You guys get out of square. Get the light cavalry around the flank. Where's my general? Bring him into the mix now. Yeah, Sipahi are good, but they're bogged down now. They're armoured, they've got high defence. They're not bad cavalry, but they are Lancer cavalry. They rely on the charge, which they're not going to get because we've now bogged them down. Good stuff. There are spikes down. New men counter charge. The Sapahi, so they're going to get pulled down off the saddle and killed by the men with bayonets. But let's take the cavalry. And send them after the other troops. Send them after the infantry that can that can be killed. Like you, actually, you might go for the riflemen first. But then let's speed up time. How oh, it's a ceasefire. Go on, kill that last rifleman. We're going to continue. Engage the Nizam. You guys here chase down the archers. Let's try and knock out a few enemy units. 
mean, granted, I expect most of them will successfully route. But I've still got to have a go. Yeah. I mean, these guys will take care of this Nizam infantry here. Try to go after the archers, I suppose. They're a bit further away. A bit further away from the line and you could potentially screw up their pathfinding such that you might actually kill them. Although it looks like they're all, they are probably going to escape on the far side now. Oh no, these guys... Yeah, let them go. Wop wop. 29 left. Close victory. It was a bit dodgy towards the end, I must admit. But that was quite a nice victory for our forces. They've got 415 men remaining. So you, you will be marching on and auto-resolving that final engagement. So Horace Fouquet can march to here. He will replenish, ready to be catapulted across towards Crimea. You guys are going to... You guys are holding position because I want them to come this way. I want to draw these two Ottoman armies into a river battle because that would be excellent. Especially as I've got other armies that are advancing up on the other fronts. Like compromising at that bridge isn't resulting in my offensive going any slower. So let's march up to that unit, but not attack them. So you're on the move, you're on the move, you've marched, you're on your way to the bridge, you're on your bridge. You require one more infantry unit and then that is secure. Again, the Swedish are on the move again. They're on the march, but it's quite alright. If they want to try anything, they can try it, because we're in we are in strength here. Upgrade your roads, you're replenishing. So let's take Michel de Choiseul. He can march out of Konigsberg, he can pick up the garrison here. And then you can march against the Swedish here in this port because they yeah they, our enemies really are becoming well they are trapped i mean we own there's no way well, there wasn't any way this is going to end any different i mean we own the americas and india for god's sake if we lost then we would deserve to lose but it's impossible to lose when you've got so much firepower at your disposal just put our artillery to the rear they can bombard with round shot over our heads. Our howitzers can fire quick climb over the top. Our grenadiers and marines are going in through the front into the town. We're going to have two infantry brigades advancing around either flank. Backed up by our cavalry. Our general is going to be on the left. Let's begin. Good. So they've They've abandoned the left flank. Our el more elite infantry storm in. Our units on the right flank are the ones that are going to take the brunt of the enemy offensive. Let's retarget our howitzers to attack that unit of marines, potentially that unit of regiment of foot. Line infantry. Blunderbuss shotgunners might do some close range damage. We've got provincial cavalry on the flank, guerrilla mercenaries, provincial cavalry, light dragoons. Yeah, they, they might do some damage to us on the march, but don't really care. You men actually might block off that corner there. The grenadiers can go there, fire along their flank into the guns. The marines hold this sector here. You men advance to there. You men advance to here. I mean, these guys are going to be running for an awful long time, potentially to a to a point where they're not even needed in the battle. The blunderbuss shotgunners have been repelled. We've been charged. The cuirassier can take care of them. My hussars can continue the march. He goes to deploy into square now. That's a bit late. Master Musketry is doing a real 
real chunk of damage here in the center. My hussars can charge the militia. Actually, no, they won't. They're going to run around. Avoid the engagement. Yeah, they don't really have a chance. Let's get these marines into line to fire into the flank of these enemy troops. Let's switch our howitzers over to round shot because there's no one so desperate we need to kill. My hussars engage the general's bodyguard. And again, my hussars can charge the light dragoons. Okay, you men push up to the new front line. Yeah, these front lines advancing so quickly that our flanking units can't actually keep up. So my light horse took a volley. It looks like their front line has collapsed. Okay, no, don't charge the militia. Because we have line infantry to do that for us. And we have howitzers that can deploy against them. The general's bodyguards, well, my, my curiosity are going to kill the general's bodyguard. My general's bodyguard can kill the guerrilla mercenaries. My cuirassier can loop around to support the combat that my hussars are involved in. I mean, their gun line is, they've abandoned it, so we can move up even more. So a couple of militia units. I mean, you know, these guys, they're firing, but they've not really got any real targets. <laughs> These poor units are just going to get surrounded and engulfed by musket fire. The militias are, militia is routed. These blunderbuss shotgunners might actually be indirectly helping us more than they realise. The general's been killed. It sends some infantry to engage the blunderbuss shotgunners. Push our line up again. These grenadiers... Don't serve any purpose. Hold back, fire it all off. So the general's been killed. I'm surprised the general's bodyguards hold, held on so long. Okay, let's get our hussars out of there. They need to start chasing down enemy troops. Let's get my cuirassier out of here. They also need to get to work killing people. Let's get these Crassier out of the way as well. So you're going to kill the Marines. You're going to kill the Regiment of Foot. You're going to kill something. How? Don't worry about the Blunderbuss shotgunners. They're not, not our ideal target. You kill the Foot artillery crews. Let's bring you guys back across to kill that regiment of demi cannons. Excellent stuff. So much damage. Actually, no, you go after the superior line infantry. They're down to 28 men. I mean, I think a good number of these units just got quick limed into oblivion. So you, be, you have to be careful about the stakes. Say be careful about the stakes, then proceed to not worry. Like, yeah, a couple of them have already died to the stakes. Kill the superior line infantry. Not so bothered about the guerrillas. Weak units of guerrillas are really easy to deal with, with pretty much every unit available today. Come on. Kill the guy to the rear. Kill the guy up front. Very well. It's everyone against 
This use of militia now. Everyone's coming after him. Not a lot they can do about it though. They are going to get absolutely reamed. There we go. Apologies, Sweden. Your peoples have invaded lands that we want to invade, so they must suffer the consequences. But that is a significant victory for our army. They've retreated unnaturally because they have been so destroyed. Okay, if I take everyone apart from the artillery, you've got enough move. Ah, oh, you don't have enough movement points. You will try. I mean, so many of the so many units now are just not important. Be on you to knock them out. Then they can advance on Vilnius. So to the south, then. You are in good shape. And we've got a full. Okay, so where do we need to send. Privateers need to go to West Africa. We might have. We might already have a bunch of ships going there, a bunch of fifth rates. But if we do, I can just send them on. There we go. You have a major fleet here, which can sail off to South America, considering we know it's free. First of all, how are we doing on the money stakes? I think it's because I've got so many troops, I'm not actually running away with my income. So let's take my sloop. Over here, pick up Francois. They can sail over towards Tunisia or Tripoli. Let's see what the Tunis garrison looks like. Strong but weak. Well, sounds like a bit of an oxymoron. We can't just get into the port. I mean, Venice is not going to do any make any difference to us. Allied with the Ottomans and Austria. Oh no. Declare war. They're going to join their North African allies. So let's get the sloop into Naples. This army can probably... I want to run to the other side and siege it. If they'll let us. Oh my god, that's not even... I'm not even going to waste my time with that. We are triumphant. Because it's just such a weak city, it's like, no, just take it. The garrison is exceptionally poor. So they could do something frustrating, like go for Algeria. And if they do, then I'll deal with it. Rustic Perrin, Deville. Embark his force aboard ship because he is going to land on Valletta. Can't attack this turn because they have ships in their port, so we don't get any movement points. Hey, the Austrians here in France have dug in, leaving us ample opportunity to. Encircle and destroy. So you guys get onto the bridge. Forward. More orders. You guys get onto this bridge. I mean, they could do something annoying and run inboard of us, but I don't. Like, if they go this way, if they try and run this way towards Paris, we'll beat them because we've got the road. So I want to do this because I want to try and fight a river battle with them because I think river battles are fun. So we've taken Genoa. Things are squaring off at near Venice. Just send you in to annihilate that little army there. It'll do us a bit of unnecessary damage, but not too much. So these two armies can square up on the border. It'll probably do with smacking you down into this Austrian army here. 
to be honest, there's loads we can do because we've got we've had a, we've had a new turn. You're going to push up to the bridge. Although really, I'd probably want more armies to go east against the Austrians. I think what I'm going to do is take. Firstly, let's move Alex Alexis Sharnock up to the rear, up to the rear. You are going to hit Franz Sutor and bring in as many Austrian <laughs> as many Austrian troops as you can. These two will do. Let's push them back towards Venice. Because then we can at least bottle them up and send maybe two or three armies south against the Italian states. Because they will need clearing out before we take Rome. But yeah, maintain maximum pressure. Because the enemy is on the back foot. And the overall end is near. Oh my god, what a beautiful piece of terrain. Because we can use this advantage to shell the living crap out of people. So let's put all our cavalry up here near our artillery because we're not going to deploy our infantry near them. They're going to deploy here and advance. <laughs> Obviously the enemy knew that was something we were going to do something like that. And that's why their reinforcements are coming in from here. Apologies for that. So we've got... Well, I mean, ultimately, it's a weak army coming in. It is weak source. Our artillery and quick climb has done a heroic effort. You three men aren't going to form square. You're going to charge the household cavalry. <laughs> yeah, they're firing rockets at us, which... Not, not terrible. They're just not going to be very friendly. Like, look, obviously you're going to lose a bunch of men here, charging the household cavalry, but why the hell not? I've got so many men, and my front is so secure. What's the risk? Drop in some power to shots. So they're killing a good, a good number of my troops. You guys get involved. More rockets. We're too close now. We can hear a puckle gun. Go get him. I'm not surprised these household cavalry have held on for as long as they have. So they're winning decisively, but they're not entirely happy about the number of men they're losing. I wonder why. There we go. The enemy cavalry is not in a good place. I know we've got some hussars mixed in there, but we've got enough... Um, we've got plenty of heavy cavalry in there. That they're all mixed in. I want my hussars to push on against the, the enemy guns. There we go. Eh, you guys drop into square. Yeah, go on, mob the hussars. Nope. There was a Hussar, there was this guy, I accidentally selected him. Form line and gun down that regiment of horse. Annihilated. Could potentially look to try and chase some units down and kill them after this action, but meh. They're all just going to go back to the capital anyway. It's not the end of the world. Hey, it's Wimbushjäger. 
They're a really good skirmish unit, and they're charging. Well, the 38th and 36th guards might have something to say about that. Reload, damn it. Counter charge. Send these guys to go chase down some enemy troops. All line up and gun the hell out of this Thur Thurheim regiment, which look pretty good. Too bad they're not gonna it's not going to help. What? I wonder if a general's, how well a general's bodyguard will do against an actual gun crew. Yeah, I wondered that. <laughs> I did think, actually, they've got ten guys. We might have enough to do that. Yeah, let's do a bit of killing, just because they are so... Some of their units are so close. Line infantry unit can be annihilated. The Thurheim Regiment and the Windbush Jäger are natural targets. The rockets have been killed, but their ghostly rocket carriers continue to trundle on into the night. Wimbush, well, they booked it. They really covered some distance, but they're going to get away. Close victory. That wasn't a close victory. That was a great, fantastic victory for our forces. Hey, they're infiltrating Forward. Italian Forward. territory now. So you men replenish. Let's get Take Alexis ready. up front. Will you force us to attack you? No, you will not. Ready and Very well. At the ready. My line is ready. March. So you've got lots of fusiliers. That's, you're not yes, the best sir. army. Sir. Ready for orders. So it'd either be this arm. Well, the funny thing is, it's, this is the, the, the army I don't want to do. But I could hit Gustav Heinemann, draw the garrison into the open field, and then destroy them. And then that leaves Venice ready to be seized by this force here through demanding the surrender. I mean, they've got quite a good garrison, actually, so I'm not sure if I'd want to actually fight it on the field. And we'll also kill this force here in the port. Hmm. I think that'll be, that, I think that'll be an excellent idea. So let's do it. Let's crush the Austrian garrison of Venice, send them tumbling back east, and then we'll send three units, three full armies through that breach into... Uh, the Balkans, although that might be overkill, maybe two. Let's keep three against the Italians. They do have lots of, well, they have lots of armies, but they could well be horrendously depleted and, uh, yeah, susceptible to being got. Right, that, that can happen sometimes with the uh, smaller factions, is they'll stack up lots and lots of troops, but they can't actually fund to keep them. So we need to be careful here. Put my fusiliers in between the artillery to give them the most support. I mean, fusiliers are fantastic infantry with their firearms, but they need they have something to be desired about when they're getting charged by enemy cavalry. So we have the potential to get screwed over here by deployment, because I'm kind of throwing all my eggs in one basket in deploying without reserves but let's scatter my cavalry out a bit if I have to dramatically redeploy one of my lines I will not really by the looks of things oh my howitzers obviously I forgot to deploy in my excitement Oh, 
I don't think they've blasted me with shrapnel shot, which is nice. It looks like the main force is coming in over here. Yeah, heavy horse artillery is spooky. And my howitzers naturally are not the most mobile of elements to get into the mix. charging they are form square get out of there chasseur my marines form square as well send my cressier out to go and set that provincial cavalry unit yeah they're gonna be a problem well not a problem per se Something to be aware of. Fire it will off. Happy to just let my artillery bang off shots against the units in the units that are dug in. Form up. Let's get my general's bodyguard out on the right flank because we have some. Um, we have a mortar crew to deal with on the right flank, all the way back here. When they finally enter the field, I'm not so keen to get my. I'm not, I'm not so keen to send proper cavalry to deal with. So let's get my gunners to focus on the enemy. Their artillery is opening up on our right flank. So we may have to send up a send up these guys as a, as a force to oppose the enemy build up. Yeah, they are going for our infantry as well. Send our curiosity to go knock out that provincial cav unit. You men push. Where's my hussars? General's bodyguard up there for you. Let's advance my line. If I'm going to, if I'm going to advance my line, you guys fire round shot, and you can probably try and do some counter battery work against ugh, artillery up on the hill. My howitzers are... Okay, let's see what the first volley does. Oh, where do they land? Oh yes, yeah, so they are in... They're right in the... They are in the right spot. So you men can... Engage the infantry. General's bodyguards responded to my... Charge of the cuirassier With their general. Which is a... A lovely thing to commit into the battle. Fusilier line is hitting their infantry. So the main thing to remember with the troops that are joining on the left flank, they are joining as a column. Another oh, it's a horse guard unit. Okay. don't want to send in... kill the general. Western European mercenaries form square. They've been broken in the centre. Monsieur Pierre, stay where you are. My fusiliers advance. These guys switch to round shot and engage the gunners on the hill as well. My howitzers are in position. They can unleash quicklime. 
So let's get my my heavy cavalry back. So they're going to reform the line. Hopefully let them be shot at by my marines. Form square. Oh, they're going to fire their pistols at us. Curiosier are ready for you. So you men advance against the enemy line. You men charge, get my marines in to help out. You men push up to the new line. My chasseur up here run on the right flank. My general's bodyguard is here. You can chase down those mortars. This infantry in my line can run away around the other flank. Around the flank, not the other flank. There is no other flank. Push my skirmishes and my cavalry up on the right flank. They're going to go down. I charge my marines into them because they'll be a bit sturdier and help my cuirassier take them down without doing too much damage. Can you guys not? Why are you not aim shooting at anything? Your fire at will is on. Cuirassier hit the general's bodyguard. Actually, you guys might want to yeah, help the left flank. The mortars are going after my general. There we go. The, f the, the, the head of the enemy column has been repelled. Looks like we are going to start to get some terrain issues here. So you men all deploy on the right hand side of that terrain feature. Get my cuirassier on the way round as well. My general took one casualty. And that's the, the only unit that's coming in here because we've already destroyed the provincial cavalry unit. How goes the counter battery? It goes okay. Knocked out a gun and we've taken out a good amount of crew. They're going to start to beef up their strength though. Chasseur up here should be pointing towards the marines and there's another general's bodyguard unit coming in. But this flank here are going to fall fairly quickly. I don't want to charge my cavalry in, it seems like a bad idea. My heavies are going to charge the hussars. Switch the howitzers to round shot. Push these men up. I just run past the guns. So the new men can bombard the enemy on the crest of the hill. The marines are charging my light infantry, which will work because marines are dope. Still bringing in more elite infantry, but then again, they're coming in one unit at a time. We can chew them up and spit them back out again. If my Cuirassier can beat the Hussars, my hearts is limber up. Send a unit of. Yeah, my light infantry is broken. It's not really a surprise, is it? New men and my chasseur push up the right flank. Hit the light horse. The marines are routing. My light infantry is taking a pummeling, but they're standing. So my howitzers that have limbered up trundle forward. 
there we go. So we can add another Fusilier unit to this right flank offensive. Push these men further up the hill. Actually, we can take the hill now. Advance and be recognised. Horse Grenadier Guards, let's get my one of my sets of guns to focus on them and another to focus on these marines. Obviously these are marines, so they are handy in melee. Let's push my cavalry up, because it looks like we might have reached the vital tipping point. Let's get my chasseur up here as well. To be honest, I might just deploy my heart just a bit closer, because we might need the fire support sooner than we'd like. Especially as these are fusiliers. If they decide they want to engage us, we can't really... If they decide they want to charge us, we can't really stop them. So let's get our light horse and our artillery in here. We're going to lose some of our hussars there, but to be honest, I think the Austrian loss overall is going to be far more significant. Charge down the Swiss Grenadiers rather than the Swiss line. You might kill them. There's only 24 of them. Go on, men. Use your rifles to snipe some of these horse Grenadier guards. Good stuff. Got them to wavering within a volley. crewman around here or is it the guy that's run away I don't know the light dragoons are done for keep charging the grenadiers okay there we go so now the enemy is in full retreat one militiaman left I'm going to resist the temptation to go for the Fusilier and instead go for the Grenadier Guard. General's on... Oh, oh no, he's all the way over there. Yeah, don't run through the town, there are spikes. Artillery, cease fire. Oh, he even fire well on. Sorry. In the Freikorps line infantry, a good looking line infantry, but I'm afraid it's not going to be enough. Hello. Although, to be honest, I'm probably not going to chase people down. When they say the battle is over, I'm likely to go, eh, fine. Just because there's no real need. Then that unit broke, and then there goes that army. Sweet. So we've managed to do some do some significant damage to the Austrians, and that very elite garrison has been turned into mush and forced to retreat back to Croatia. So now you, good sir, demand the surrender of the city. Very well. You will maintain the siege. New men will replenish, and new men will group up and replenish also. Now we can finally upgrade these. I might actually make you go to the south. Although it does look like what I said before about the enemy not being able to sustain large numbers of troops is generally accurate. So two armies is probably going to be good enough. I'll put them there just to stop them from snaking up. We're not going to worry about taking them out now. So we've already fought the Genoese, so I'm going to take this army and... I mean, yeah, they get a garrison, but most of their, their actual army has been destroyed already. So there goes Genoa. Rebuild the House of Representatives, Olivier Bousset, replenish your troops. Build better roads good. So Tunis is ours. If they decide to go west we can take Tripoli with this army and then they will be destroyed 
from the game. Um, these guys have all moved into blocking positions. You guys are awaiting orders, so push over to he push over to Is. Actually, you guys don't need to go that far. We want to start building some ships to transport men over to potentially Greece and Athens to really put the squeeze on the the Ottomans there. So we're in holding pattern to the east. I mean, we could do some more fighting here. Well, I want to see. I, I kind of want to give them a turn to see where they how they regroup. So Cambridge officially has no research. So Fort Frontenac, you can be destroyed. Graz is going to be well, going to be destroyed. So I want Cambridge to work on percussion cap. Good. So there's no tech, nothing we can do there. Just hit end turn. Allow all our other forces to push up. We're still building an army in England to go take Denmark. But yeah, <laughs> we busted through the Middle East. And now they've not really... Uh, yeah, so I thought they, they might go east, but if they go east, it's fine. So the army to the rear in France is not exactly drawing away critical forces. Let's just say that. Oh, it's so not the Ottomans, but let's give them a bit of time because they've got to work out what they're going to do because they've been they're in real trouble. But actually, I'm probably going to chop the recording here because the Ottomans, because there's been no movement, it's going to take a while. So just a second, everyone. I'll bring you back. Bring you guys back when they've done something. Yes, yeah, so there has been some movement. The Ottomans are attacking one of our fleets, and it's like, fine. We either win, which is great, or we... Actually, let's... Scupper. Those ships. I think I've probably done the most money, money inefficient way. Um, but when they fight our fleets, it's kind of like, eh. If you win... If you win, you've reduced our... Um, <laughs> our um, sustainment problem. Not that it is a problem. Yeah, they're starting to... So what, what's what been going on is the Ottomans were... They fought a lot of um, rebellions near Istanbul. So clearly the, the Turkish people are unhappy. But they're suddenly starting to realise that actually there's a lot of... There's a lot of bad stuff happening elsewhere that they have to deploy to fight against. Um, so the armies that were pushing east towards Baghdad have clustered together... So we might end up having to fight a... Okay, you might head west to prevent them from sneakily attacking Jerusalem. God, they're still fighting... No, Damascus, sorry. They're still fighting off rebels. So a lot of rebels have popped up in Istanbul. So that's why they're re they really can't afford to um, lose control of the situation. Oh my. Well, we're very close to the end of the episode. And this won't really take much take up much time. So I don't know where that guard unit's going to be, but yes, let's gobble them up. Oh, it's near Moscow. The guard unit's near Moscow. But yeah, this is a nice way to uh, to end the episode as a cheeky little river battle, and to be honest, we are within striking range of Moscow, and Moscow has no garrison apart, apart from that which they will um, deploy when I siege the city. They don't actually have an army in the city. So, oh, river battles. So it's probably, I mean, well, one thing that's going to cause us some problems is actually so much so, I'm probably going to deploy both of my guns back here because they've got a load of, well, they've got some 24 pounder heavy horse artillery, which we don't have. So we're going to deploy some howitzers in a counter battery measure well, you guys don't have to worry about deploying yet and then we've got all clumped together nice for their artillery I mean, you guys might think why does he always deploy 
to fight over the crossing. That's because that's generally, despite this illusion that they've deployed over to the right, that's actually what they're going to do. 24 pounders, good. Our artillery has actually attacked the correct units first. Although it looks like they are, for once, going to actually cross the the bridge. Because normally they don't do that. It's a thing they don't do. Poor devils. We've done some good damage to their horse artillery. To be honest, just cross. Just cross the river. Look at, oh, cavalry charging in pairs. Some of their men, they, they are getting cover from the bridge. It's the problem is you run over and it's like, yeah, I can just... You guys are walking, you guys need to run. Taking out their artillery pretty nicely. To be honest, we're probably going to charge over on both sides. <laughs> yep. Here come the guards. Yeah, you may need to run. This is the thing with... You slow down when they're in the river as well. So these units are quick climbing, so they're going to be attacking the units as they cross over. We've knocked out the heavy horse artillery. Let's focus on the six pounder and how it's going to continue to attack them. No, nope, they're going to cross over. They're coming back. Deploy into squares. These two units are just going to sit here and not get attrited. Poor, poor souls. Look at these cavalry. Imagine being them. So these two squares don't fire. You can fire. Yeah, there we go. The 68th has been broken. Just keep keep marching up. I deployed my infantry quite deep. I think some provincial cavalry might also try and cross the bridge again, which, you know, doesn't seem like a good idea. There you go, more horse artillery's gone. Volleys are hammering home. Seven regiments getting cut down. The guards are still back here. Oh, the lancers are coming back. This probably isn't the most efficient way to lay my infantry out, but I don't think it's going to matter a whole lot. Yeah, let's pivot you guys. Advance you guys forward to fire into the flank. New men hit that last unit of horse artillery. We wasted a quick climb there. You guys don't have the range to fire across the river. Rifles and so on do. Okay, now I think we can do it. Now we can cross. as they line up to try and fight us. Quick Climb comes in and just wipes them out. Yeah, I'm going to be losing more men doing this than I need to, but eh. Why not? Yeah, they don't have enough range. Aim at the 78th. You guys aim at the 12th. 
Oh, they're redeploying to face off against this formation on the right flank. Again, look at this for a quick line target. Holy moly. It's beautiful though. Can't stop us. Wave upon wave of Louisianans. To be honest, my uh, the range of shrapnel shot isn't very good. He goes push up to fire at the seventh because I think that's part of the reason why they're doing such a reasonable job against this light infantry unit is because no one else was actually in range. But now they are. <laughs> See you later, seventy-eighth. You're not going to stick around for very long like that. All the artillery is now just bombard this cluster of troops there because they're now stuck. Poor souls. Garrison guards. Grenadier Guards, the second Grenadier Regiment. Trouble is though, I don't, no, I don't. When you kill a Grenadier Regiment, you kill like the second. Obviously, that means the second is now available to be recruited, or the next unit that is recruited will be called the second. I think. This is how it works. Now, human mob, the seventy-eighth. Let's focus all our fire onto the. Horse onto the provincial cavalry. So let's make you guys go up here. You guys go here. There goes the seventy eighth. Silly fools. You guys hit the first foot guards. You guys hit. Where are the grenadiers? There they are. Yeah, all my artillery switched to round shot because... You know, do I need to fire quick line into this mess? Doesn't that look like we're a teensy weensy bit overreacting? Go on, Regiment of Horse. You might get hit by some latent artillery fire. That's okay. Oh, your fright wore off. My bad. There we go. Horse artillery crew is there going, if we stay really quiet, they might not notice us. Second Grenadiers are going down quick. Guerrilla mercenaries have nowhere to skirmish to. Oh god, that provincial cavalry unit took a load of losses there. I think they were aiming at an infantry unit, so we got a whole volley. A whole volley was shot off at once. Oh, you guys are firing well off as well. Get them squared away, Lieutenant. Or Captain. Second Grenadier Regiment, they've done a good job at standing up to that, but they are now shattered. And I'm not going to continue this fight, even though we could probably get a handful more kills. Watch the darn point. <laughs> they've been chewed up and spat back out. With no... on the horizon, no enemy troops. Well, no troops to help them out. <laughs> well, there's a small army there. Ooh, do you want to insert Grim Solensen? We absolutely do, but looking at the timer, I believe it's time to end the episode. Thank you for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed, and we'll see you next time for yet another devastating turn for our enemies. See ya.